Hi guys, I'm Greg Howlett and welcome to a new year. Now this is the time of year where I dump a BHAG on you. And a BHAG is a slang term uh, from my previous corporate life and it stands for Big Hairy Audacious Goal. And uh, in other words, it's a goal, it's a stretch goal. It's something that's going to take some work, um, something to stretch you a little bit, but something that's very, very useful, very, very important. And I've done that for several years now, and I want to keep that tradition going because sometimes I give you tips that you can use really quick, but a lot of these things are important, and honestly, they just don't come that quick. They take some work, and uh, thus we have the BHAG videos. Um, and this is the one for, um, well, I'm recording this in 2015. You can obviously do it anytime you want. And the topic for the year is going to be playing by ear. That's the BHAG, uh, playing by ear. Now guys, a couple of little myths that we need to sort of dispel here up front. First of all, anybody can learn to play by ear. I have people tell me from time to time, they'll say, Greg, I just wasn't born with that gift. And I say, well, were you born with the gift of reading music? Well, no, I had to learn that. Well, if you have to learn how to read music with your eyes, why um, would you not have to learn how to play music by ear? Why would you be born with one talent but have to learn the other? Uh, you see what I mean? They're both skills that, that we learn, and uh, it's sort of silly to think. I don't know why we have this perception out there, but we do, where if you're born able to play by ear, good for you. If not, you're just out of luck. Um, not the case at all. Um, you can learn to do both, and you should um, learn to do both. Uh, it's sort of silly. In our culture, in a lot of cases, p music teachers nowadays actually frown. I'm playing by ear. I, I've heard a lot of stories. One uh, story I heard was somebody told me that when they were young, the teacher would slap her wrist with the ruler if she sensed that the, the, the girl at that time was playing by ear. Um, absurd. Makes no sense, but that's where we are. Uh, to me, it's more natural to learn to play by ear than with your eyes reading music. After all, music is um, an ear thing, right? So why um, is it more important to learn music with our eyes than our ears? But the big important thing here, guys, is this. Unless you're going to be a classical concert pianist and spend your life replicating somebody else's writing, you guys are going to end up in situations where you need to write your own music or, n or make up music or, or play music by ear. You're going to find yourself in situations where you don't have music in front of you. And so playing by ear actually is quite important. It's a skill that you can learn and you should learn. Now, I'm going to go through a three-step simple process over the next few minutes that's going to, that will get you um, playing music, at least to first base. Now, at the, if you go through these three steps and sort of master them, you're going to be able to say, I play by ear. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to win awards. Uh, this is a journey, right? Just because you finish these three steps, you're still going to develop as a musician, still going to learn how to play by ear better, just like you would learn to read music better, but you will at least be able to say, I play music by ear uh, with the three steps, and then you can spend the rest of your life, like I do, um, refining it. But three simple things, and we're going to go through these quickly, and, and guys, there's going to be some stuff that I talk about that some of you are going to say, whoa, I don't know what that is. And in those cases, I would give you two bits of advice. First of all, you can get a lot of the gaps filled in on my website, which, which has all those free lessons. Um, we're going to talk, for example, about secondary dominance in a few minutes. Secondary dominance are well talked about in the free section of my, of my um, site. And then, if you want a formalized approach that really breaks down these three steps and talks about them in a lot more detail, um, I have a course out called Play By Ear. And uh, it will go into all these things in a lot more detail. So, just to let you know, those things are available. Um, I won't dive too deep. I'm just going to give you the surface things um, here for the next few minutes to get you rolling, um, and then you may have to fill in some gaps on your own. Okay, so here are the three steps. Number one, um, we're going to doodle a melody. Number two, we're going to add the harmony. And number three, we're going to add texture. Okay, those are the three steps. The first one, doodle a melody. Some of you are laughing. Why would he say doodle a melody? Well, the melody line, of course, is just a single note um, melody of the song. And the reason I say doodle it is because there's a couple different ways that this particular step is sort of taught. 
Um, if you ever go to classes or anything where they teach you how to play by ear, um, there's a couple of approaches. One approach is they teach you a very technical perspective where you learn how to identify intervals and other things so that you can hear, uh, for example, you hear two notes and you say, oh yeah, those are a perfect fourth apart. And so you play that um, on the piano. Um, so that happens. There's another perspective that I more subscribe to, and it's this. We all naturally can doodle a melody. We can just sit down and doodle around and pick out a melody. Now, before I even took piano lessons, I remember this. The piano was delivered a few weeks before piano lessons started. What did I do? I sat down at the piano and I worked out melodies. I'd miss some notes, right? But you could do it. Even back in those days with 10 or 15, maybe 20 minutes of work, I could pick out a song like Amazing Grace um, and it would work. And my guess is you can do the same thing regardless of whether you, where you are. Even if you've never had a lesson in your life, you can still sit down and doodle around and find a melody. Now, the interesting thing is that is how I want you actually to approach playing melodies by ear. I just want you to doodle around and learn how to get better and better at playing a melody. Not by any fancy system of learning intervals and such. I don't really subscribe to that. Um, I would rather you just do it naturally. And if you pick a melody every day, you pick a song and you do this for a while, you're gonna get very, very good at it. You'll get to the point where you can doodle out a melody very, very quickly. And as, that's the sort of the approach that I want you to go. Just again, we don't have to get very deep in this first step. Um, when I was young, I remember the only song I couldn't figure out was Dixie, the old Southern song, I Wish I Was in the Land of Cotton. And um, I remember telling my mother, you know, Dixie can't be played on the piano. I actually believe this uh, because I couldn't figure it out. But most songs I could figure out, and you can too. So the first step is to do what you already naturally do. Get to the point where you can do this. Okay, that's the first step. Again, most of you probably are already there. Now, the next step is harmony. And uh, I'm gonna give you a few thoughts really quickly in harmony. First of all, I get to give you my big axiom. I say this all the time. It's not necessarily wise, but it's, all, it's, all, it's certainly true. And it's this. Listen carefully, 90% of 90% of songs can be played using three chords. And you guys know what those three chords are, one, four, and five, right? A lot of you know. Those that don't, go to the website, take my course, um, the Nashville Numbering System or the Chord Toolbox or something like that. But most of you know what I'm talking about. Um, this is how, you know, the guy, the teen guitar players, you know, they sit around the campfire and impress girls even though they've never had a guitar lesson. They've learned three chords and they just play them over and over again in songs. Um, most songs, about, I'm going to say 90%, most 90% of the songs out there consist almost entirely of just one, four, and five chords. Okay? So if you know your one, four, and five chords, you can play most of most songs. Um, that's another way of saying it. And so you need to get to the point where you know your one, four, and five chords in every key. In the key of C, for example, C major is your one chord, F major is your four, and G is your five. So you need to know those three chords. Now, in the case of um, a song like Amazing Grace, thus those are the only chords in that song. Um, you could use other chords if you want to, but those chords will handle the song, or you can carry the whole song using those three chords. Uh, and you'll find that's the case. Now, how would you do that um, without music? In other words, if you were playing by ear, you've already figured out the melody, right? So what we're going to do is we're just going to experiment to find where 1, 4, and 5 go. Okay, so we start the song, and the song usually starts on a 1 chord, so I'm going to try 1. So I'm just going to play a chord in the left hand, and I'm going to play the melody in the right hand. Sounds right, right? I'm playing a 1 chord. Okay, I need to play a chord here so I can try the one again. Doesn't sound right. Five chord is the second most used chord. Doesn't sound right. Here's your four chord. And that does sound right. Okay? So you just work through this process. We move to the four. 
Now the next chord, let's try one, and one works there. Still one. Okay, so this is a five. Yeah, again, doesn't sound right, doesn't sound right, does sound right. Okay, even with an out of tune piano. Uh, like I said, I have uh, leftover hammers on here from uh, they're working on it. So, but uh, even on an out of tune piano, you can tell that is the right chord uh, for that spot. And so you go through that process. Now, how long does it take to learn a song that way? Well, probably you can figure out the melody in a f maybe five or ten minutes, and then maybe another five or ten minutes, you'll know all the chords that go with the melody. And you should be able to do this. Okay, so you might say, okay, at this point you're going to say, Greg, how about those other chords, the 10%? Uh, remember you said that even in 90% of the songs, only 90% of the chords are 1, 4, and 5. How about the other 10%? Um, how about songs like, uh, um, how about jazz or uh, modern classical music? Well, modern classical music is its own animal, and we won't talk about that. Um, but when you get to these songs that are a little more complex, that go outside one, four, and five, guys, um, we have to uh, look at some other things, and a lot of it goes sort of beyond the scope of this class or this little video. Um, but one thing I'm going to tell you, I can handle about 90% of the exceptions by telling you this, okay? Those are going to be secondary dominance. And instead of going into a long, dry, boring lecture of what secondary dominance are, let me just say this about secondary dominance. They are, for the sake of this video, um, the major two chord, the major three chord, the major six chord, the major seven chord. Okay? So most of the song is going to be played with one, four, and five. Just try the major two, three, six, and seven. In other words, the other um, chords and you will find that those cover almost all um, the 10% the that don't fall into the 1, 4, and 5 category. Um, some of you are saying, whoa, whoa, Greg, hold up, hold up. The 2 chord is not major, it's minor. I know that. Um, I've been doing this a long time. I know that. However, I'm trying to make the secondary dominant, really what we're talking about is secondary dominance, and so I'm just calling it a major 2 chord. Um, technically, it's not. Technically, it's a 5 of 5, um, but I'm trying to make things really, really simple. Trust me, between the 1, the 4, and the 5, and the major 2, major 3, major 6, and major 7, you'll be able to play basically any song um, that comes up um, that you need to play by ear. Uh, again, you start with 1, 4, and 5, and then if something doesn't sound right, try those other chords. And 90% of the time, Either major two, major three, major six, or major seven is going to uh, going to solve um, the problem for you. All right. Now, there are other exceptions beside those. Again, we'll talk about them at some other point, some other class. Let's move on to the third issue. The third issue is the issue of texture. The third, for, remember, we started with doodling a melody, then we added harmony. The third thing is texture. And when I say texture in music, guys, I'm talking about Okay, we know what the melody notes are, we know what the chords are, now how are we going to play them in so that they sound interesting? Okay, because you'll never go to a concert and listen to somebody do this. Right? Not going to happen. Okay, however, you might hear this. Okay, so the difference is texture. One is just basically playing the chords and the melody note. The other is playing the chords in an interesting way. Um, we call it texture. So how do you get to the point where you're adding texture? Well, understand that once you have the chord, you can play the chord in a lot of different ways. Um, I'll give you some quick little um, ideas here. Um, one of the easiest things to do, and the thing that I do more than anything, is just what we call block chords. Okay, so that sounds pretty good. It's really simple, but all I'm doing is I'm sort of spreading out the notes of each chord between the two hands. I'm still playing the notes of the chord, but instead of doing this, 
I'm sort of taking some of the notes from the left hand and moving them to the right hand and getting an open sound. Uh, I call that block chording. Uh, very effective, very simple, very beautiful. Um, a lot of the music I play has an awful lot of block chords in it. The other thing you can do, you can play arpeggios. Now, when we play an arpeggio, basically we're just playing a chord, but we're spreading the notes out. We're not playing all the notes at the same time. So instead of playing just a C major chord, for example, I might do this. Or I might spread the notes out more. Okay, so you have this. You know, that's a really, really pretty sound, isn't it? Um, you can get a lot of mileage out of something um, as simple um, as that. The other thing you can do, and I sort of encourage, is inversions. Now, if you don't know what chord inversions are, go look on the internet. Basically means um, changing the bottom note that you play on the, on the keyboard. For example, that's still a C chord, but now I'm playing an E on the bottom and uh, inversions will really help your sound. Here's another version. That's an inversion there. And by the way guys, I'm just giving you some little thoughts here. Um, again, I said I'm going to get you to first base this year. Um, but you can obviously go way, way beyond. you can do and that's where your creativity can shine and uh, you can do what you want um, the rest of your life but I just want to get you to the point where you're doing this where you're thinking in terms of melody harmony and texture now how do you practice this this year here's my recommendation guys um, first of all pick a new song every week now pick a song that you actually have somewhere in print so if you get stuck you will be able to go back and say, okay, I can't figure out this chord. You can go back and look at what the chord actually is, right? Um, so try to use a song that you already have somewhere written down. Hymns are great because you can just pick a hymn out of the hymnal. Um, try to do it in the same key, okay? So we didn't talk about keys earlier, but to make this work, what you're going to need to do is use the same starting note that you find in your hymnal, and then you'll that'll ensure that you end up in the same key um, that the hymnal's in. So play a song that you already know that you already have in the hymnal or in some other piece of music um, and then maybe each week take a few days to doodle out the melody so you got it pretty much perfect okay the next two days maybe work on the harmony figure out what chords and then the last two days work on texture okay so take five minutes maybe five maybe ten minutes of your your piano regimen every day to spend on learning to play by ear and by the end of the year if you do that, five to ten minutes a day for 50 weeks, playing five or six days a week, by the end of this year you're going to make some serious improvement in this particular skill and you'll be able to say, yes, I learned how to play by ear um, this year. Final exams next January. No, of course I'm joking. But I really would like to hear from you if, um, if this helps you and you're doing it and uh, let me know how it goes for you. I love to hear those success stories. And uh, we'll see you later around the site. Again, if you want more details on this, check out my course, um, Play by Ear. It's available at greghowitt.com. It can be of use to you. Um, and remember all the free resources as well. We'll talk to you later.